Most cars have it here. Mm -hmm. Some of them have it a little deeper in. So the BMWs, Mercedes are all the way in the back, but these cars have it just right here. So it's easy for you girls. Oh, okay. So what are you doing driving such a big car? I mean, you know, I like big toys. All right, so most cars have a second release, usually placed in the middle of the hood. So how big is this motor? How many liters is it? Uh, it should be 6.4 liters, I believe. What is this, your boyfriend's car or something? Usually it's not a girl's car. No, maybe if I had one, it could be his car. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so typically you check the oil on these cars. You want to wipe it down the first time so that you get a clean reading. There's no oil on it. You always gotta look for this yellow ring. Red ring usually is for transmissions and transmission fluid. Usually it's a little harder to gauge. So pull it back out. Then I step into the light. If it looks a little light, and it's at least to its uh, minimum or maximum, then you're good. Usually you want to put it on a piece of paper just so you can really see the color of it. And you know, you can tell this oil is about a half-life. So it's, you're in good condition. You know, your boyfriend takes care of it. Thanks. <laughs> so you do have a boyfriend, I told you. No, I am the boyfriend. You know, oh, I can play both. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> can't find the hole, bro. Shit. Get some help. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, so yeah, now you're good on the oil change. Now, if you ever do need to change it, these cars typically take about seven, 7.5 quarts, maybe even eight. You know, usually the bigger motors, so. Uh, wherever you go, you know, be ready to spend about a hundred bucks. But other than that, you should be good. I mean, I don't think you're worried about that. Guess like six dollars for these cars. So. Sponsor, thank you. Blacksmith Blades, best scissors. I don't know exactly what they're made of. I'm a barber, I like machines more than scissors, but when I do use scissors, I make sure they're Blacksmith Blade scissors. So, for tonight's segment, I want to welcome the girl that I taught how to check her oil. Right? So, everybody, welcome, Sarai. Hey. hey. Thank you. So Sarai is one of my students. Uh, I chose her to take this interview upon with me uh, because she's one of the more confident students that I have. Uh, I feel like she doesn't have any stage fright. And uh, by that I mean on an actual stage and cutting behind the chair. So uh, I decided that she'd be a good fit for this. And uh, we're gonna discuss a few topics tonight, like uh, give a few insiders on the actual laws of TDLR, as far as uh, some mental training skills, and of course, we'll talk about a couple tools. Tell me a little bit about yourself, Sarai. Uh, what's your nationality, first of all? It's kind of hard to tell. Well, my parents are from Mexico. Um, so that means you're Mexican? Yes, okay. I'm Mexican, full Mexican. Um, they're from Tamaulipas, which is literally right when you cross the border. So a lot of people are like, oh, some fronteros. Like, yes, we are basically. Just when you cross over, there you are. So I also uh, had the same, some of the same interests as me. 
She likes fast cars, likes to uh, cut, and also has uh, some of the some good friends that we share. Uh, one of them is 100K, and a couple others like Authentic and Rob the Original. And uh, what what do you think is one of the most important things uh, that you're trying to learn here at Blanco Flawless Barber School? I would say to be like a really good cutter like you, you know, and have customers come back. Um, a lot of people that I've met here so far, like your customers, um, a lot of them all tell me that they've been coming here for years and I think that's really, that's really cool to have somebody just like come even though you have different locations, they come to the one that you're at, so. Oh, that's dope, you know, like sometimes it's hard for me to look at it that way just because, like I told you earlier, my mind just stays scattered. You know, uh, it's really hard for me to grasp my thoughts sometimes. Uh, but yeah, once once I sit down and I really choose to just uh, reminisce on how long I've been in the industry and how long people have followed me, it's, it's pretty dope, you know, because people don't have to. And you know, and at that, I've taken them to my own shops where there's a lot of talent as well. And they still decide to come and uh, chill here and get their cuts here and give the kids at my school the opportunity to actually cut them and mess them up. Marvin Marvin is this guy that yells barbers, you know, he does this all over the country, you know, he's like super famous, but he's more like a, a revolutionary guy, you know, and he's got a really like a deep voice that really makes him stand out. Like when he's here, we give him the mic right away. We're like, here you go. Brother. Oh, okay. You yeah. Know, so that's him, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's Marvin Marvin. And anyhow, he was, you know, just, uh, Letting me know how everywhere he goes, the main thing he hears is, is the complaining of student barbers saying that they didn't learn anything at barber school. And to me, it's like, damn, you know, like I own a barber school, so it's a, it's, it's a little uh, it's a hit to the to the heart, you know. But I do my best to innovate and to innovate, you know, the systems that we have at our school so that you know the kids are actually learning you know so i, I as you see me i do a lot of hands-on like i actually hands-on like i'll hold hands with my students and move the clipper in the direction and the motion that it's supposed to you know and I, we have a million other ways to address uh state board exams uh, as well as actual practical or written exams and we just like to actually prepare the students we're not government funded we're private owned so our best recommendation is gonna come from the students that graduate here. So we wanna make sure that everybody's actually coming in because they want to learn how to cut and not just because the government funded them to come here. So I'm really glad that you're making the, the sacrifice and the compromise to enroll in our one year program so that you can actually come learn with us. And I see a huge potential in you. So uh, like I said, I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate the students that can listen and follow direction when most of the time it's really hard to memorize steps or even memorize a few seconds of my lesson or anybody's lesson at that you know our memory span is, is, is so short that it's, it's become a problem you know so I, I you know I was telling you earlier that I wanted to get a, a brain coach you know yeah. because I'm so scattered that I, I can't grasp everything you know when I need it or when I want it so there's got to be a way to divide it uh, the files in my brain and where I can just like right click and, and pull it and then I can speak to you guys about exactly what it was you know and not actually have to like oh my god what was I say you know and, and you'll probably see me go scatter minded a few times tonight you know but the whole thing is to actually practice uh, using your memory uh, one of the, the, the biggest things is that can you, can you imagine that there's somebody out there that uh, in 2005 recited 67,890 words. I mean, words, numbers. The word, that'd be a lot, that's a book, right? <laughs> Anyhow, numbers, so 67,000 numbers. So that, what does that tell you? That, you know, it's our brain is uh, able to do a anything, a lot, you know? Uh, so that, that inspires me, you know? So I try to stay as clean as possible with uh, eating and actual, uh, just any consumption that interrupts my thoughts or, or that might not let me have a solid, solid thought. You know, because so, I think one of the biggest things they say that that is that affects your, your brain is exercise and sleep. Yeah, for sure. What's one of your uh, your most embarrassing memories? Let's see well, how your memory works. Dig in there a little bit. Go for them files. 
and tell us a good story. Uh, there's so many. Um, but the most embarrassing one to me is probably, you know, when you have those moments where you're laughing really, really hard and you can't even breathe, and then all of a sudden a little fart comes out. Yeah, that's my embarrassing moment. That. So wait a moment, the girls fart? Yes. You know, it's weird a lot of guys ask that. Like, do girls fart? Duh. Like, why would we not? We all have a butthole. You know what oh, I'm saying? Man. Like, <laughs> obviously we fart. But that's really embarrassing. Like, you know, don't, if you fart when you're laughing, just, you know, just don't say it. They're not going to notice unless it really does stink. Then, you know, walk away. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're not even going <laughs> to. <laughs> Let someone else take the blame. Right, right? like, hey, nigga, this thing, I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I mean, I guess it's when the subject of farting, you know, I guess, well, everybody knows guys fart, right? So, definitely, uh, well, definitely one of my most embarrassing moments is uh, with the only barbershop I've ever been with. One day I was just sitting in the barber chair and I sneezed and I farted, right? And uh, I thought it went on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the owner turns around and tells me, it's all right, man. It happens. And I'm just like, I'm light-skinned, so I'm already like... <laughs> Red. I'm like, you, you heard that? I was like, my bad, man. And I was actually kind of like shooting towards denying it, you know? And I was just like, damn, just own it. You know, so I ended up owning it. But definitely one of the most embarrassing moments, and I don't even think anybody knows about that story besides the damn owner. <laughs> So, uh, let's uh, let's change the subject a little bit. No more farts. Uh, however, good. What about customers in chairs? Yeah, they fart too. Believe it or not. Honestly, I don't know what I would do if a customer farted in front of me. I would probably just act like I didn't even. So the last time somebody hear farted it. in my chair, it actually wasn't even my chair. It happened here at the barber school. And it was actually by my student, Luis Esparza, cutting him. And this guy literally farts and says nothing. Just dwells in his... I can't even know what to call it, but disgust, you know? Because I mean, it, like, it just kicked me in the nostrils, man. And I was like... And then I look at Luis and I'm like, Luis... Did, did you... Did you smell that one? Is that you? You know, kind of again, that is like, is that you? Oh, <laughs> and this is, a, it's a, he's like a Central American or Mexican guy, speaks no English, so right away I'm like, man, you shitted on us, bro. <laughs> and he's like, still denying, bro, it's like, yo no fui. And I'm like, Man, I know this guy doesn't lie. You know, Louis is like one of the most legit individuals I know that I know if he did it, he would have just excused himself, you know? And I was like, you shit it on us, bro. You literally did it, bro. Just own it. And he's like, no for you. And I was like, so what we had to do is just step back and just let him uh, <laughs> grow in his stink, you know? That's <laughs> the way. So anyhow, we'll move to tools, you know, I just thought I'd share that, you know, fart stories are always pretty funny. Anyhow, uh, one of the newest tools out right now is a cordless detailer. Everybody's getting it and uh, everybody's using it. And for the most part, everybody's pretty satisfied with it, including myself. I'll tell you what did let me down, the Andes Master. First of all, it's overpriced. I think I paid about 250 for it. And the machine is relatively lighter. It's a lot like a senior. So it's not necessarily what I was expecting out of Andy's, you know, like I figured if you're gonna innovate a machine that's that classic and uh, that part, that big of a part of a barber culture that you would like definitely blow people's minds away. Uh, and to be honest, I, I used to cut with Andy's Masters. I cut with Andy's Masters for seven years, and I loved the machine and it gave me the results that I was looking for. And then I tried a Magic Flip, which is half price of what an actual Master Andy's Masters cost, and it does the job 100 times better. It's cordless, it's lighter, 
and this is where the detailer comes in because it's wall as well and they complement each other to a T. You know, when it comes to doing the cleanest edge ups, the, the cleanest lineups, and it comes set straight out of the box. This is the first time in history that I go to barbershop after barbershop or barber after barber, and they all tell me that they're getting the same result without even having to set the blade. And that usually never happens. You open up a clipper, you usually have to play with it, and you have to set the blade so you don't end up cutting people. Uh, have you had any of those experiences here? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> to tell you the truth, or you want me to? No, yeah, I learned where the detailer should not go, or where I should not use it yet, because I'm not ready for that. Um, it was actually a T outline there that was set wrong, so don't take it out on the detailer. Please. Okay, we'll the see. But well, I it used it wrong. Outliner, cordless. But yes, tell, yeah. us, tell us what you did with it. So I was shaving the back of the neck, right? And you know, as a friend, obviously, you know, if your friend looks bad, you wanna be like, hey bro, you kinda look bad. Well, in this situation, my friend didn't tell me I was hurting him, so I was cutting, and I was like, your skin looks a little red, you know, like, is your skin irritating? He's like, yes, you're cutting me. And I was like, you couldn't tell me that when I first cut you. I was like, I'm over here, keep going. <laughs> but I felt bad, definitely. Hey, it's definitely something that happens when you're starting out, and it happens to barbers all yeah. the time anyway. Uh, I've actually had really good experiences with uh, customer service with it. So one time I had a, a barber that did this kid. I have pictures and we're going to put them up. <laughs> and uh, this kid, his mom brought him the next day and he literally had an edge up scab all the way around. And I was, and, and this guy swore he was like the best barber in the city. Oh and, my uh, God. I mean, just arrogant as can be. And I couldn't wait to show him these pictures, you know, so thank God. You know, like, <laughs> thank you for finally giving me some evidence to show this guy that he kind of sucks, actually, you know? And uh, the guy that you heard, luckily, yeah, it's not the first time that's happened to him. I've seen him go to the barbershop, too, and come back with the, with the lineup, you know, just permanently engraved. <laughs> the so, yeah, you know, it happens. It definitely happens. 2020 is right around the corner. Any goals? Um, yes, definitely a goal for me is to um, travel more than I did this year and be a little less stress of work, you know, focus a little more on myself. It's one of the big ones. So, you say you want to travel more, so how much did you travel this year? This year, um... Almost every month on the weekend, at least two times, two weekends of the month, um, I always go visit my family in Mexico, so that's like a normal thing. Um, got to go to Cali, um, let's see, I went to Oklahoma, um, and did you buy weed? No, I didn't, but I went to, what is that thing called, Wichita Falls or something like that, like a water park type thing uh no you went to uh turner falls i'm guessing that yeah, that's what it's called i saw something yes. falls right yeah so turner falls is dope it is in oklahoma it's about three hours in and that's i used to go one. there as a kid really i got to see my dad walk on water there my brother was <laughs> running one time and i saw my dad literally run it looked like he was walking on water you know, but <laughs> that is a really cool little park yeah i went there but i do want to go to wichita falls that was the next one i wanted to go to but i went to like little cities like that that's close cool. around yeah definitely I, i've got to do some travel in the last few years and mainly just west coast i've done a little bit of east coast but not much uh but definitely in the same situation for me 2020 uh first thing is of course the diet if you guys can tell I'm not in the best condition but i'm 30 years old and i want to be around at least another two years i mean another 20 years no, <laughs> 30, 40. Anyhow, uh, definitely I'm considering uh, being healthy and being fit just so that I can at least be around maybe to have grandkids or to see my kid grow. So uh, the first thing we're, we're doing to change that because I'm so short on time is that we're adding a gym here to the barber school so that our students, when they have downtime, instead of wasting their time and sitting there not doing anything, can invest their time working out and 
you know, just keeping their mind sharp, their body sharp, and that'll actually help them keep their skills sharp, you know? So, uh, and most than it, more than anything, it will help me actually have the time to work out because believe it or not, even though I'm super busy, there is little gaps that get wasted that I can actually add up to a gym session. And the only way I can do it is if I don't have no drive. So eliminating the transportation will give me that time to actually exercise. So it'll be mm -hmm. just, you know, phenomenal to have it ready to go by the beginning of the year. Uh, do you really have any plans for using the gym here? Um, yeah. yeah. We have our own showers and we will have a, a, a small locker room type deal. So it, uh, it'll be beneficial to everybody. Then yeah, you know, I think that'd be fun, especially to hang out more with the rest of the classmates. Um, I know I met most of them, I think, well, the ones that come at night. I don't know if I met everybody that comes in the morning, um, but it's really fun being here. And I think that adding the gym, and if I do come to the gym here, will be also like another bonding with the, cl the classmates and stuff. So that'd be cool. Uh, here at my barber school, we actually interview every single individual to come in just to make sure that you're a good fit and that we can keep the vibe just nice, clean, and uh, energetic and, and just positive overall. You, if, if you don't bring in people that are positive, then they'll begin to change the vibe, and sooner than later, you'll be having conflict, and we want to avoid all the situation and make sure that everybody's a good fit. And like I said, by adding the gym, that will maximize our energetic levels as well as our positive energy. And, you know, just simply, uh, maybe we get to live a little longer. And that's, that's my ultimate goal. So uh, with that, uh, you know, we're gonna go back to uh, Mari Marv's uh, main focus right now, which is, uh, he was telling me that he wants barbers to actually attend board meetings. Do you know what board meetings are? Usually it's like the higher people that want to talk about um, like what they can do to improve. Yeah, typically. Yeah, so the state of Texas holds these meetings like monthly, quarterly, and sometimes weekly. And we get an email as a, actually as a barber, you can just sign up. Oh. Just remember one of the biggest things in, in, uh, in life is to, to not be ignorant or to be neglect or to neglect information. You know, so we want to make sure that you know, we know where to go get this information. So you can always visit their website, which is TDLR, and you can just Google TDLR and it'll take you to their website. You know, as long as it ends in .gov, then it's usually official, you know, because that means it's government. So uh, we're going to start with me giving you these tips and advice as a Texas barbershop owner or even a barber in a barbershop uh, so that you guys can actually benefit from some of my experiences and some of my uh, education and one of the, the, the best tips that I can give anybody is if you have any issue where TDLR comes in to your barbershop and you run into any fines then what you want to do is hire an attorney out of Austin, Texas typically they're two three hundred dollars as long as it's not like a, a, a severe situation you know, but let's say you have an unlicensed barber working there and you get fined and he gets fined. It's not that big of a deal. Just make sure you actually have uh, direction. You know, that's what we're doing this so that you're, uh, you're not ignorant to the fact that there is help out there. You know, for two, three hundred bucks, you know, you can negotiate better terms so that you don't end up having to pay full fines. You know, uh, TDA Large really uh, willing to work with individuals for as long as they're promising to better themselves. You know, they, they want to have communication with barbershop owners and barber schools to better them and not necessarily wanting to just take your money. You know, so I've had situations where negotiated terms into half of penalties because, you know, I, I, I promise that I'm going to continue trying to better myself and try and inform individuals to do better themselves, kind of like we're doing now. One of the things that me and Marie Mar discussed, which uh, proved a little bit of my ignorance, which there is a, a national board for barbers, you know, and it's actually the National Barber Board. So if you Google that, find them and get a little bit of information 
so that you can kind of see that you're not necessarily alone. So Mari Mar's plan is to go state by state and join these board meetings so that we can actually, as barbers with uh, good platforms on social media, that we can come together and actually better the system. So y'all make sure y'all follow Marvin Marv and join his uh, movement, which is Raise the Standard. So it's hashtag Raise the Standard. And actually right now, if you send a screenshot to him with the, that hashtag, he actually posts and do on his stories so you can actually get some followers out of it as well. Uh, make sure that you read a book or two. Make sure that you're updated to the state laws of your state and make sure uh, to tune into our next episode it's been a pleasure having you today and uh thank you for coming out thank you for joining my school and uh we hope to see you again for sure thank you